Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. That is the reason why some people had first class in school. There are people that remember the answer only after the exams. Hallelujah. Yes, you see, but the exam has finished. Matthew 22, verse 37. Hallelujah. Are we ready for the word of God? Is everybody set? Praise the Lord. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. One more time. Thou, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Hallelujah. Father Lord, we ask the Lord to speak to us this evening in the name of Jesus. You remove every form of destruction. Let the word be a blessing. Grant our heart to be quickened to you this evening in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. So God's love language. My screen is not up, so please, I need it to be fixed. God's love language. Hallelujah. Now, God is a spirit. How can you love a spirit? Love language is the best way, and by definition, uh, define love language as the best way to communicate love. Hallelujah. There is a man, a philosopher called Gary Chapman. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. I wish that there are a lot of movement up and down and it's not good. Praise God. Uh, his name is Gary Chapman. Yes, he, lo- he has written a lot of books about marriage and then it's really a blessing for you to get it. One of his popular selling books is The Five Love Language. He has the one for teenagers, the one for married, and then the one for singles or youth. And then one of his best books also is Things I Wish I Knew Before I Got Married. It's one of the best books I've ever read in my life. Things I Wish I Knew Before I Got Married. Hallelujah. It was a book on a classic book for people intended to marry. And then the other book he wrote that is really a bestseller again is Love is a Verb. In that book, he explained that love, a verb is an action. He explained that love is a verb. Love is not a noun. Hallelujah. So what is God's love language? In 1 John chapter 4, from verse 7 to 8, the Bible taught us clearly that God is love. Hallelujah. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Anyone that loveth not is not born of God. Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 4, from verse 7 to 8. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. Verse 8, he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. So God is love amidst many things. Hallelujah. God expects us to be lovers. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 4, 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 4, God expects us to be lovers. He is love and he expects us to love and to love him back. Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 4. The Bible says, In the last day, about the last days, people shall become traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. Hallelujah. So God is love. He expects us to love him back. And then there is also the, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of love. According to the book of Romans chapter 5, the Bible says the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. I pray that this revelation will quicken your relationship with God in the name of Jesus. Now, there are basically five love languages I've gotten to Gary Chapman. That is a foundation. Hallelujah. But with God's love language is not five. Because I remember when the Lord taught me about this recently, I wanted to keep the topic for when we'll be looking at love. But then say we should share it when we are looking at God. Hallelujah. I, believe, I don't know why. And I believe it's for a reason. There are five love languages. The first one is for words of affirmation. Don't forget the way I define love language according to Gary Chapman is the best way to communicate love to someone. Hallelujah. The first one is words of affirmation. Um, there are people that when you tell them good things, you affirm them. You, you are supporting of them. You tell them sweet, 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 sweet things. They feel love. Hallelujah. Other people is act of service. They like to be helped. They like them to carry their bags, help them tie their shoe, help them do something physical. 
when you do that, they feel love more. Other people is physical touch. When you touch them, they feel love. They cannot talk without touching other people. That's a, their love language. Other people is gift. When you like them or you love them, the way you show them you like them is gift. They can't believe you do not buy anything for them and you claim you love them. Why? Because they love gift. To them, talking to them too much is a waste of time. Buy me gift and summarize the topic. Let your gift do the talking. Hallelujah. Let the gift do the talking. The description of the gift is saying more than your words. <laughs> and then there are people that your words say more than the gift. They can throw the gift back at you and say, I want you. I want your time. Then other people is quality time. They like you to spend time with them. Spend hours talking just for nothing. Just sit down there and be looking at each other. That is the way. So people feel love in any of the five ways. Now, when somebody feels love the most in one, that doesn't mean he doesn't like the rest. He likes the rest, but he prefers this one. This one speaks louder to him than the other. Who among us don't like word of affirmation? All of us do. Hallelujah. Nobody here doesn't like act of service. You like somebody that when you are carrying your bag, it should help you carry it. Hallelujah. All of us like physical touch. All of us like gift. All of us like quality time. But there is one that speaks to you more than the rest. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So that is the basic love language that Gary Chapman showed. And then he was a doctor, a physiological, human physiological doctor. And then he has proven that when you do these things, you can appease to the person that you love the most. And then this book really made him a millionaire. Why? Because it's sold to the world. Because humans psychologically are the same in all the seven continents of the world. Hallelujah. So these are the love languages. So why must you learn God's love language before I tell us God's love language? The first thing is that why you must, love God's love, why you must learn God's love language is when you displease God or displeasing God is dangerous. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Let me ask you fast these days. Grace to remain fast. Hallelujah. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. Hallelujah. So because he was not pleased with them, they were overthrown in the wilderness. So why you must learn the love language is when you displease God is dangerous. The Bible says they that did not love him, they were overthrown. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 31 spoke about displeasing God and it's very, very dangerous. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 31. Hebrews 10 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. When you displease God, it is very, very dangerous. The Bible says it is a fearful thing. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. The Bible says, We knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Hallelujah. So for you to be pleasing to God and not to displease Him. Because when you make Him angry, it's very, very dangerous. Hallelujah. Today I was reading a story of a Kenyan couple. The man had displeased the wife before going to work. And then when he came back, he came back 5.30 a.m. after a knife shift and then laid down to sleep. She poured acid on his face, blinded his two eyes. That was not just enough. When she poured the acid, she poured water on the floor and connected electric wire to the floor. So when the acid was on his face and he tried to run out of the bed, he was electrocuted. Why? Right? Because pleasing somebody that you love, displeasing the person is dangerous. Hallelujah. That's what they say. When you're angry with your wife and you're not sure, don't be eating her food. <laughs> yeah. The whole concept is it is not good to displease the person you love. Because love is a two-edged sword. When the other side of love done is very dangerous. Hallelujah. The same force of hatred is equal to the force of love. So anywhere you see extreme hatred, that person has the ability to express extreme love. Praise God. So God that is love is very, very dangerous when you displease him. Hallelujah. Number two, why we must learn to speak God's love language is that we have to love God on his terms, not on our terms. When you want to love God, you have to love him on his terms. Hallelujah. Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, 
He that cometh to God must believe that he is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. So, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. That means, with holiness, without faith, you will not please him. Studying the Bible is not faith. Hallelujah. Prayer is not faith. So, when you want to please God in Psalms 119 verse 89, the Bible says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. For a love language is one of the five. But there are some that when you do it, you are not pleasing me at all. One of it is you saying your own is quality time and taking my time. You are not pleasing me at all. You say you want to spend time with you. You are not, I, I'm happy. <laughs> because if you want to please me, you have to please me on my terms. I don't even understand me. I've said this here separately. If you love somebody, let's say I love music. And then you want to please me. You play music. You don't bring a movie with me. So you please somebody on his terms. Come on, hallelujah. You want to give me food, there's a kind of food you do that you see, there are things I don't like. Like example, I don't like surprise party. This one, you enter your house, hey, happy, but I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, I don't really don't like it. I am not, naturally, I am not into surprises. I don't like surprises. I like knowing what is happening. I like being in charge of the things. Or if you want, if you must give me a surprise, I should know the surprise, so that so that at the end you will not be the one surprised. <laughs> yeah, because you will attempt to surprise. At the end, you'll be the one, you'll be surprised that they did not value the surprise. I don't even understand me unless you know what I like. So if you want to please me, you just find out. You say there was surprise. Like I say, I don't like surprise of gift. Now you go and go and buy me an expensive gift, and I may not like it. But there's no surprise everybody can receive. That is money. Everybody likes a surprise of money. Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah, but there's some surprises I don't really like, personally. Personally, I don't like talking a lot on the phone. If you want to be happy with me, you talk with me through the chat. So see, pleasing me has to be on my terms. Now, first lady, on the other hand, is a different kind of person. Her love language is different from my own language. If I want to make her happy, I have to speak what she hears. Hallelujah. So that is the same way with God. If you want to please God, you have to please him the way he wants. Not the way you want. Because you can be the one exciting yourself and God is there just bored in the meeting. Hallelujah. I pray that we will learn to please God on his terms. Very soon the terms are coming. Hallelujah. Those are his love languages. Number three. Why you must love, learn to speak God's love language is to have our effort received and blessed. To have our effort received and blessed. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 to 2. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 to 2. Hallelujah. The Bible is speaking about, I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and what? So it can be holy and not acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now, open up to Romans chapter 14, verse 18. Two verses later, Romans 14, 18. Now, sir. Romans 14, 18. For he that in this thing serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Romans 15, 16. The next chapter after that, Romans 15, 16. So, why you must learn love language is to be able to have your effort that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Now, um, Cain made a lot of effort to be able to satisfy God, but it was not acceptable. And if many of us here are in love, how many of you have ever attempted to shock your lover and then it was not acceptable? Let me see your hands up. Okay, my wife is up, so let me use that example because she has tried to shock me. And it did not work. Well, I can remember those days when I visited. She spent a lot to cook, a lot of things. And Charlie, I didn't like it. And I don't know how to pretend. That's my weakness. I tried to eat it. The thing was not going. But she has spent research, browse online. All you need to believe me is cook beans. <laughs> like, like, the equation has ended. Just, just, you don't need to. Just go the extra way and browse. No. 
That is my food, beans. Just cook beans. Or just rice and stew. Yes, I'm not into fried rice, all those kind of stories. No. Mm. Or those, yeah. See, it, it will, you can try and then the service will not be acceptable. Come on, I don't know if you understand me really. You must speak love language so that your effort can be acceptable. You can be making all the efforts, fasting for 60 days, and then it's not acceptable. God is watching you. He wishes you can do what he likes. I don't know if you're understanding me, guys. Yes. There are small things that turn people on. And that is what I discovered about God. The big things that we do don't move God. There are little things that we can do that can turn the whole equation. So to make your service acceptable unto God, you must learn to speak what he likes. And then you'll be pleasing to him. Number four. To have a fruitful relationship with God, you have to learn his love language. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 8. Hallelujah. Wait, so many of you know raise up your hand that you have never done something for your partner and then it was not accepted. That means you are not making effort to please your partners. Because if you are making effort, somehow, somehow you will have flawed falter somehow. Like myself to I falter. I went to the market shop, bought the most expensive shoe in my life for a first lady. Highest shoe ever in my life. She didn't like it. Anytime I look at the shoe, still in the drawer. She has not worn it once. I bought it last year. Yeah. Why? Because the, she said there is a way she likes her leg to be in the shoe. And then that shoe. Anytime I look at it, it's painful to me. I, I saw it yesterday. Yeah. I remember, I'm telling you. I was not having money trek to town. I went with 8000 to buy a particular shoe, but then that shoe was expensive. I said, hey, I like this shoe. I, I sacrificed. It was shoe for money for two shoes. I bought one. She doesn't like it. And then the one I bought, two five, is the one she keeps wearing. <laughs> the, the, the fact is, you can make an effort, and it's not acceptable. If you want to please God, you must make the service to be the way it can be acceptable. Hallelujah. I pray that after this service, you will wear it. Amen. See, and, and I'm not angry a bit. Why? Because it's true. I did not consult her. When she gave that, I wanted to surprise her. Went to the market, spent four zeros to buy a shoe. Surprise, surprise. That kind of shoe that they wrap in carton. She shall be saying she likes canvas. After bringing it. She said, what about you? Mm, I like it. You know, there is a way, there is a, there is, there is, I like it that he said I don't like it. <laughs> you know, just, I, I know her shoe size for years. 42. I bought it. It's her shoe size. But she was putting her leg. She's not entering my leg. I know. Yeah. She went back and changed it. I'm telling you. I made an effort. Like, let me shock her. Like, let me just. It, is not, it was not acceptable at all. Not acceptable. It's the truth. If you want to have a fruitful relationship, you must learn God's love language. So you know, go to the extreme and sacrificing Isaac and Sarah, and then God will not accept it. it may be simple that God wants. Second Peter chapter one verse eight. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. When you go backward, was talking about things to do, and one of them was charity. Number five, why you must speak God's love language to him. Very soon the love languages are coming. Is to have a great feedback from God. In James chapter 4 verse 8. James chapter 4 verse 8. The Bible says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your heart, you double-minded. There is a way you will get the feedback when you speak the love language of somebody. I don't know if you understand. Are you, like the, the response will show someone. You know, anytime, since, no, no, you don't your hands. I'll be using my love as an example. There's a way first lady hug me when I give her something she likes. It's different from every other hug. I'm the one receiving it, so I know. <laughs> different. The, the feedback is always different. When you say what you want God to hear, or you do what you want Him to do, the feedback you get from Him is different from doing it the other way around. Hallelujah. And then you know that you ought to please God. In 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 1, we ought to please God. So we learn to speak God's love language because of what reason? Displeasing God is dangerous. Number two, we have to love him in his terms and not our terms. Number three, we have to, we have, to have our efforts to be received and blessed. 
Number four, to have a fruitful relationship with God. Hallelujah. To have great feedback from God and we ought to please God. So, the number one God's love language. Don't, don't, let me say it before we continue. Reading the Bible, prayer and fasting, is none, of, none of the above all together. It's not even part of the love language of God at all. The most important love language of God is souls. Giving him souls. If you love God, you give him souls. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter 15 verse 7. That is the only verse in the Bible that spoke about joy and rejoicing in heaven. The Bible says, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner, one that repented. More than over 99 just persons with need no repentance. John 3, 16, the popular scripture, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. If you want to show God you love him, give him souls. Hallelujah. Make sure that people give their life to Christ to you. That people are drawn to him through you. That is his love language, one of it. He will respond to you in a way like never before. Souls are God's greatest love languages. Come on, are we together? When you win souls to Christ, when you bring people to God, you show him love more than any other thing. So ministering, going out for evangelism, winning souls, is a great love language that gets God's attention anytime, any day. That is why, see, all the evangelists, when you read the God generous, particularly those that were evangelists, live longer. Billy Graham was, how many, how old was he when he died? Live long. Red Bonke was how many years old? Over 80, right? I, can't, I cannot remember the exact year of Billy Graham, but I, I used to know it. See, so all the people that are into soul winning, there is something unique about them. When you study the God general, study any life of a soul winner. Why? Because they are, see, me, that nobody rejoices in heaven over a dead person coming to life. Because a miracle on earth is not a miracle in heaven. Do you think angels are celebrating? Hey, the cripple is walking. Nobody ever celebrates. It doesn't impress God. But the Bible says, there is joy in heaven over one sinner. So souls is or one of the ways you can express your love to God. So if you love God, you speak love to him by winning souls. And I pray you will speak that language to him. Come on, in the name of Jesus. By stepping out. That is why we have the conference next week. Teaching and teaching. You cannot win souls until you have a revelation, until you have a thought, until you understand the concept. So souls are God or one of the greatest love language of God. That is number one. Souls. Hallelujah. Number two, God's love language is faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, the first sentence. For without faith, it is impossible. It is what? Impossible to please God. So you cannot make God happy when you don't believe he can change your story. Just believing in him can make him change your story. Hallelujah. Yes. So faith is another way you show God I love you. God's love language is faith. Believing in what the Bible says. Believing in what he can do to you and through you. Have faith that your life can change. Have faith that you will, not su- that you will succeed. Hallelujah. Have faith. Anytime we talk like this and you believe and then the word of God come alive in you. The faith you express what God is pleasing to him. Hallelujah. It's pleasing to him. Number three, God's love language is obedience. About faith, also we have Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. The Bible says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. The third love language of God is obedience. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. The Bible taught us in that scriptures 
And some said, had the Lord as great delight in burnt offering and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. Hallelujah. Guys, how many of you here will want a wife that you say, I want you to be home by four or something like that and then she will not come back home by four but then she will come back and go and empty her account and buy your Gucci back or something like that. Like consistently, she prefers to go extra to sacrifice but then simple obedience. Hallelujah. Obedience is always stronger than sacrifice. Obeying God pleases him than emptying your account in church offering. Come on, are we together? Obeying God, it makes him happy than fasting till you have ulcer. Simple obedience. All the things that God has told you to do and you know, obey him. It pleases God than all the sacrifice you can have. Obeying God is better than sacrifice. Job chapter 36 verse 11. The Bible says, if you will obey me, you will spend the rest of your days in prosperity. So the first love language of God is souls. The second love language is faith. The third way to express God to, love to God is obedience. Obeying what he says. Everything he says. And I believe, I remember what was the month we looked at the topic of obedience. Last year we looked at obedience as a theme for the whole month. So we have a lot of things to look at and get the messages to lead to them again. Obedience is God's love language. It speaks stronger to God than any sacrifice you can ever give. There are women that will prefer going for, for night vigil, praying for their marriage to work, than simply obeying their husband. I don't know if you understand me. They will prefer, instead of sitting down to obey the husband, they will prefer to go for night vigil. Lord, my husband, he said it's not correct. He's turning, 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 praying, and then, you know, moving from place to place. But when she comes back, the man said, can you boil water for me? I will not boil it. See? That sacrifice will neutralize, disobedience has neutralized those sacrifices. You see, you can go the extreme to satisfy people, but simple instruction from them is stronger than those sacrifices. So when you want to please people, or you want to please God, obey Him. It pleases Him than sacrificing. The fourth love language of God is worship and praise. Worship. When you worship the Lord and praise Him, it communicates love to Him. Hallelujah. When you worship Him, when you really worship Him, when you praise the Lord and you really worship and praise the Lord, you communicate adoration and love to him in first samuel chapter 13 verse 14 the bible says i have found myself first samuel 13 verse 14 and samuel said okay but now thy kingdom shall not continue the lord has sought him a man after his own heart hallelujah the lord has found him a man that is after his own heart don't forget at this time david has not give, killed goliath you remember that david has not done anything big but the only thing we know about David was he was a worshiper before that time. So that could have possibly be the reason why God said, this is a man after my own heart. Because in 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 1, the Bible says, speaking about David, the Bible says, called him the sweet psalmist of Israel. So he was a worshiper, he was a praiser. Like I've always said, and I've learned before saying it, is that the Part of the Sunday service that is directed towards God is praise and worship. Is that not true? Do you think the preaching affects God? Preaching is actually God speaking to us. When we pray during intercessory prayer, we are talking to God to do something for us. Anything else in the service, offering, we are not, we are in, the only part that goes to God is worship and praise. I don't even understand me. That is why everybody in church must participate in the worship. And in the praise. But I know there are senior Christians that come only through the preaching. You know, that they are mature Christians. Praise and worship is for the baby Christians. To them, they think it's for babies Christians. So, you go or come after. They know when the preaching starts in Shekinah and Calder Center. It's 15 minutes before the last hour. So, you know when to come. I don't know if you're understanding me. On Sunday, they, 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 they exactly when it's preaching. Because praise and worship is for babies. Hallelujah. 
It's not correct. Everyone should be a worshiper. Everyone should be a praiser. I learned from God's servant, Dr. Paul and Nature, he said that the pastor should be the number one praiser of the congregation. So there are pastors that wait till after praise and worship when it's time for them to minister before they walk into the congregation. Hallelujah. Now, if the pastor do it, I don't know, you know, sometimes God gives people different instructions. Unless you are under instruction for you as a pastor, it is wrong for you to stay outside church when praise and worship is going on. Let the members do it. When it's time for the word, I'll come and deliver. No. All of us are here in the congregation worship. The pastor should be part of the praise and worship. I saw it in God's servant that the year. I saw it in God's servant Bishop David. I saw it in God's servant Dr. Paul and Neche. All of them are on ground during the praise and worship to participate, sing the songs that the people are singing. Because you are first a Christian before a pastor. Come, hallelujah. See, there is a way you know a worshiper. When other people are worshiping, you know a worshiper from the congregation because they connect to the worship. They connect. When you're not a worshiper, they're just they are being entertained by the choir. No matter how they're high, you know, no matter how everywhere is elected, they're just, they just watching. As if they're like they are not part of the service. It's like it's not the way they do auditioning. Like they are scoring you, they're just watching your, your voice note 15, dress sense 15, vocal prowessness 10. They just sit down in the as if as if they are scoring. Which is very, very wrong. Hallelujah. Everybody's called to be a praise and a worshiper. In your house. And then you must notice something. There is, there is, I have noticed something. That there are morning devotion songs. How many of you notice it? There are songs that most of people sing during morning devotions. <laughs> Did you grow up in a family where they do morning devotion? Have you noticed that there are morning devotion songs? They are different from other songs. There are what we call deliverance songs. When it's time for deliverance. There are songs. Nobody sing. Ah, don't know. During deliverance sessions. Have you noticed? There are songs. <laughs> There are songs for some things. It's because you are not just part of the whole arena. That's why you don't connect. I encourage every one of us to be a worshiper. Hallelujah. It pleases God when you wake up in the morning and say, You are the love of my life. You are the hope that I cling to. It's God that gave you the voice. Sing it the way it is. God does not judge you about, about vocal prowessness or not. It's nonsense. That is meant. It's when you want to minister to men that you must learn those things. But when you want to sing to God in your room alone, just sing the way you are. Come on, now we together. Then everybody sing. God's servant of the Paul and they said that one day he was singing in the hostel and somebody came and said that, you, you are not ashamed, you have frog voice. But they were laughing at him. So they continue singing. And now he's a world record acclaim. I, I watched one of his songs yesterday, Narai Kele, 10 million views. So that song, 1.6 million views. Like, like, mega. He won, I know, a 4 3 award in Men Lion with his voice. Have you ever listened to Chris Delvan Life? Have you ever listened to Chris Delvan Life? Yeah, is his voice really phenomenal? In the end, it's not phenomenal. Be anointed and have a baritone voice. It will, it will minister. Hallelujah. Yes. So, everybody should be a worshiper. Say with me, I'll be a worshiper. I'll be a praiser. I will learn songs. Not every time you are chewing your mouth in songs. Say, I will learn songs. In the name of Jesus. I will take my time to learn the lyrics. No, you don't, you don't say that one. Take my time to learn the word. Because worshiping at home, that is the reason why there are morning devotion songs. Because everybody knows them. When you lift another song, everybody begins to chew their mouth. Like, every, almost everybody. That's why there are morning peculiar songs. In the morning, early in the morning. Oh, uh, what? Take glory, Father. That one that introduces sleep. Take glory, Son. Take glory, Holy God. And then there are, there are songs like that. Good morning, Jesus. I know you came from heaven. I don't know whether that one is praise or worship. Some of them don't even know whether it's praise or worship or thanksgiving or descriptive songs. The Holy Spirit is on the throne. And then, you know that people can sing it with energy and passion. See, because there is passion and energy, does not mean God is accepting it. Hallelujah. Yeah. I am praying, I am training myself that no, my children will not be like, will not be like my own. Age. Like, like the, the morning devotion in my house will be different. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Number three, God's love language is consecration. If you love God, you will keep yourself for Him. In Hebrews 
chapter 11 verse 5 or with first corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 the bible says my your body is the temple of god hallelujah if you love god you will keep yourself for him when you love someone you will keep yourself for the person so it's only for him i remember new year new year first day of the year my, my first lady that time she says she doesn't reply anybody happy new year until i tell her happy new year she's keeping the happy new year for me i'm the first person that deserved the happy new year is that not really emotional yeah I understand maybe you're jealous but it's really a blessing it, it, it's, it's consecrating the new year for her one love yeah when you love god there are things you keep for the person you keep for the person. So setting yourself up, consecration means setting yourself apart for holy use. You keep yourself unique. For, you, the Bible says a, a soldier does not entangle himself in the affairs of men. There are things that other people that don't love God can do. Hallelujah. I remember Two-Face Edibia's song when he was still Two-Face. Before he moved to Tubaba, when he was singing, uh, singing about a woman saying, under the right ceiling. She was keeping herself under the right ceiling. You know that song? Come on, you know that song, right? Yeah. Keeping herself for the right man, under the right ceiling. Praise the Lord. Consecrating herself. I pray that you will prove your love to the person you love by keeping yourself apart. Come on, Hallelujah. Consecrations speak love to God. You love him. I'm not like the rest. Lord, help me. Can you say, Lord Jesus, I want to keep myself for you. I want to consecrate myself for you. Help me. Help my weaknesses. Help me, Lord Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, bring people around my life that will help me to be consecrated. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The Lord will strengthen you and quicken you in the name of Jesus Christ. I know as young people, I've taught this before, there is always a thrive. I, I believe one of these days, I don't know which month we'll talk about. See, there is a drive to, there is always a natural drive in life to test things before they arrive. Do you remember when you were in JS3? Especially if you went to a school where seniors wear long sleeves, on long trousers. You could not wait till you go to SS1. You are waiting to wear the long sleeve. Do you remember? You could not wait. And then when you started wearing the long sleeve, it's a heat everywhere. You start folding it again. Do you remember? You start folding the long sleeve again. The same you that want. You could not wait till finish this. You start wearing long sleeve. It's like that. Do you remember when you are using pencil and then you could not wait to start using biro? Do you remember? You, it's like, ah, I cannot wait to start using Biro. When you see other people using Biro, they are tired. You want to use Biro. Well, now you're using the Biro. How, how, how far? How is it now? Yeah, you see, it's, it's not it's spectacular again. Do you remember when you saw Indomie on TV for the first time? Like you, you, like, like you couldn't wait to see your first bite of Indomie. So now, how far? If I give you Indomie, is it impressing you? Why is it not impressing? Because you have had enough. That is the way sexual drive is. You will always have a drive to have it. And when you have it, like these three examples I gave you, it will become like that, Charlie. Try your best to calm down. I know it's difficult because I was young. <laughs> and I'm still young. I know it's difficult to have a young lady like my wife that is beautiful. Coming to visit as a young man, you need the Holy Spirit. Yeah, you need the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Preaching, I saw her call. I was disconnected from the sermon. Yeah, me. I was preaching as I come. I saw her call coming. I don't know why the phone was on. I was I, I missed the message. Because it was my damn say calling. It's, it's power, love is powerful. Come on, all together. When you fall in love, I, there is no way. See, let me tell you something. There is no way you ask a lady out if you don't like her physically. No way. There was something in her that attracted you. I didn't mean there is no dash enough for in the Bible, brothers. No. 
But then the problem is you need to, I am telling you, if you allow it to drive you, the relationship may not last. It will not. Because once you have it, men are hunters. Men. M-A-L-E. Men. When they have something, they want something new. That is the way men are. That's why you hear them saying stupid statements. Will I be eating okra all the days of my life? Will I be eating one kind of soup all the rest of my life? Because that is the men are them. The nature of man. That is why they keep. They will teach you, teach you, and the and it's not because they want it. It's because of their nature. Have you ever seen one male animal, one wife, one wife? Have you ever seen it? You see one here going in the house with five, seven ladies. See one go hey, yeah, 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 go to Fulani camp. You see, count the females and count the men. When you go to a pride of a lion, it's only one lion and seven ladies. And then all the other, there could be male, but the man controlling the seven girls. It's like, because men are polygamous in nature. So sister, it is your advantage to keep yourself. Because we know what to say to have what we want. You must make up your mind and say no. And if there is a brother here that is deceiving a sister, I am prophesying over your life. With the grace in my life. You are, you are making up your mind to deceive somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I will not say it. I will not be like I'm causing somebody. But, but if you know it's wrong and you are doing it. See, 10 years of your marriage will be designated for pain. Yeah, because you are, you are spoiling somebody's daughter. Causing, yes, yeah, somebody's wife. Your own two is on somebody's room. You are talking about yeah, yeah. As you are with your, your own two. In somebody's room. It's not, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Try. If you are in a hurry, marry. Tell your mother, if you don't allow me to marry, I'll be bringing men. Let me marry on time. Marry. That is why I wanted to marry on time. Hallelujah. That is the problem of most young men. When you remove your men, young people don't have a problem. Consecration. Oh, many, many people, it's okay. It's that drive. But the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Say the Lord will help me consecrate myself to keep myself self in the name of Jesus Christ. So don't wake up and pray and say, Lord, remove the desire. God will not remove it. It will never go. If a young man met Bishop Noel John, he said, The Lord, please pray for me. I, this erection, let it die. Bishop, Bishop Noel said, what, what now? Now I'm anointed. If I pray for you and it dies, and then you marry. And I'm not anointed as I was when I prayed for you and it died. How, what will happen to you? No, God will not remove it. Your power is to tame it. Hallelujah. I believe it's possible. If I can do it, you can do it. Hallelujah. Come on, if I can do it, you can do it. There is grace in the house. There is grace in the house. Official social distancing. Official. Official. You think you can. The problem is maybe people think they can. That's the problem. You will not know when you are kissing. You will not know. After the kissing, then your brain says, What did I do? <laughs> After the kissing. And how do you think God is in your body and you are carrying God to fornicate? How do you think it, it is like? It's not pleased. Number six. God's love language is number one, I said was what? Two is what? Three, three is what? Four. Say five. Hope you know I love you. That's why I'm talking to you like that. If I don't love you, just keep quiet. I really love to see good things coming to pass. When I see any of us in love together, I love it. I love love. I like it. I, can, I, I, I even want to do Shepardoria Lincoln. To li- I like to see a good man marrying a good lady. I love it. Hallelujah. I'm giving you this advice to be a blessing to you. God will help us in Jesus' name. Number six, God's love language is service. Service. When you serve... It pleases God. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 20 and then Exodus 23 verse 25. Mark chapter 12 verse 30. Service pleases God. Hallelujah. Service pleases God. Which one do we have? Deuteronomy chapter 10. But Exodus 23 verse 25. The Bible says you will serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread and water. He will take away the sickness. See, when you are here working for the Lord, serving the Lord. Hallelujah. You are here for Riyadh. You are doing anything for the kingdom. It pleases God. 
You are speaking his love. Hallelujah. Serving in the house of the Lord and serving God is really a blessing. Another love language of God is spirituality. Romans chapter 8 verse 7 to 8. The Bible says to be carnally minded is what? Dead. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You please God when you are spiritual. You please God when you are spiritual. You please God when you are spiritual. When God sees you engaging in spiritual activity, it pleases him. It pleases him. It gives him joy. To see you that the fact that you can close up and fast for three days, seeking his face. The fact that, how many of you would like it to see that you're, I, I remember that when first lady told me that she, she read, she stalked my Facebook to the first post I ever made in Facebook. <laughs> like, I don't know, it's, it's a love language to somebody, that somebody is there in them. I don't understand me. I don't even like to see that your partner is there viewing all your Instagram pictures, liking all of them. I know many people that enter a relationship like that, the guys like all our pictures and then who is this person liking all my pictures and then when he say I say ah and then they are, they are, they are married that's a good life love story it's not love when you are reading the bible to discover about him come on are we together when you are engaged in spiritual activity it pleases the lord just the fact that you want to find out what it takes to please him it's God's love language and then another, the last love language I have for today is purposeful living in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 17 when you live a life of purpose it pleases God so what, is, what are the proof that you are speaking God's love language to him? And then we close from there. Hallelujah. But I just really feel a leading in my spirit to talk about um, what I spoke about concentration. Uh, you see, I really want if I have my way that great things happen in Shekinah Encounter Center. Hallelujah. Because we have young, a lot of young people coming together. It's, it's, I, I believe it's really a blessing. Encouraging that we fall in love. <laughs> Hallelujah. Fall in love in the church is really a blessing. Praise God. Fall in love in the church. Many people are coming and going. Sisters are coming and passing and the brothers are not seeing. Or brothers are coming and going and they are not seeing. I'm not happy about it. Hallelujah. Really encourage because I remember those days when I was, I encourage people. My thoughts, my marry, my CBN, my this. We, we were just marrying now. Eh? Okay, just my married auntie, the man guy crossed one auntie all the way. Just like that, like that, like that. But I, I was saying, it's good, it's good. Hallelujah. It's really, really good when you fall in love in church. And I'm happy anytime I hear that somebody has seen a damsel in the church. It's really blessing. Hallelujah. My prayer is that is the, the damsel too will like him. Let me tell you something about love. The, the amazing thing about love is the one you love is not the one that loves you. That's one thing, shocking thing about love. The one you love may not be liking somebody else. The secret of love is loving the person that loves you. Are you understanding me? Love people that love you. When you are, there is no point chasing about somebody and, the person, and then there is somebody here loving you in local jail. <laughs> Hallelujah. Love the brother or love the sister. And I believe the Lord will help us. I am prophesying marriages in Shekinah Encounter Center. Yes, yes, I am prophesying and I believe it will happen. It will happen. It will really, really happen. I am tired of being the only married man. Many. So that many things I would like to preach. I cannot preach because everybody is single. It's happening in the name of Jesus Christ. You will marry early on time. You will marry the right person. You will not suffer what other people have suffered. See, if you are here and you hear me consistently, one thing that can happen to you is you will marry right. You will marry right. Hallelujah. You will. You will. You will. But it's really a blessing. And don't, don't leave that joke that people say marriage is not an achievement. I can understand your bitterness. But marriage is an achievement. It's really a blessing to have the right person in your life. See, we live in a world where everything is built and established around family. So pursue it as a dream. So that you may have everything once your relationship life does not work. Everything will not just fall down. You cannot be smarter than God that the first thing he did was to establish a family. Come on out together. I know, I know people around me, I was speaking with someone even this week, he said that all the three sisters in the family of Australia, they don't, they don't even want to marry. Why? Because of the, their kind of wedding that their parents had. You understand? 
Because of what they saw their father and mother did. All the three of them don't want to marry. Not interested in marriage. At all. So don't allow that to affect you no matter what has happened in your life. Make up your mind you have a good life. And the key is keeping yourself. That is the key. I am telling you, the right person will find you. Will find you. And you will be found. You will be found in Jesus' name. I pray from the depth of my heart for many of us. I pray from the depth of my heart that you will not miss it. And I am praying. And I know God is answering my prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. So proof that you are speaking God's love language to him is that God goes all out for you. When you speak his love language, he goes all out for you. In Genesis chapter 12 verse 3, the Bible says God spoke of Abraham. He will curse the person that caused them and love the person that loved and bless the person that blessed Abraham. That the E.A. Adebo, he said that once upon a time there was a man that insulted his wife. He was almost cursing on the stage. He said that if you insult me, I will not say anything. But when you insult my wife, I will kill you and bury you. How many of us knew you when he said that? But when you insult his wife, he will kill you and bury you. Something happened in the Oscar last month. How many of you know about what happened in the Oscar last month? About Will Smith smi- smi- smiling, snapping that young man. You but angels say, the, mis- he, 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 the difference between him and Will Smith was that if he was the one, the man would not be standing after the slap. He will have gone down on the floor. But the man insulted the wife a year before. 2016 insulted her again. Did it again. Bishop Dark said, if you don't like him, if you don't like his wife, he doesn't like you. But the same with David, 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 he said that nobody should come and complain to you about his wife, including his wife. Leave them. Why? Because when you, when somebody that loves you, you go all out for the person. When you find love, so when you express God's love language to him, he goes the extra mile for you. God's servant that the Iadebe was in a country where there was snow. It was freezing. He was shivering. Then somebody stood close to him and pulled his jacket. And put, you, you listen to the story, but he kept it on the floor. He said, sit down. He said, no, where you are called? God said, will you keep quiet and sit down? Said, God spoke to him. He said, for you, I can freeze other people because of you. Yeah. I'm going to have a witness of the story. I can freeze people for you. When you love God, God can go the extra mile. He can, pro- he can send angels to keep mosquitoes away from you. He, practically away from your life. A sign you love God is you will see him. You will see. So why don't you love him to see all of him? He can go extra mile for you. I may God go the extra mile for you. For you loving him. Number two is divine preservation. In Genesis chapter 20, verse 3 to 7. Abimelech came and took the wife of Sarah. That is the man that loved the Lord. God appeared to him. He's not saying angel. He said, Abimelech, you are a dead man. <laughs> Look at this. And God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said what? Behold, thou art but a dead man. Like, <laughs> as, you are, as I'm talking to you like this, you are dead. Yeah, he said, return to that man, his wife. The man said, you are not for taking her, you are dead. It's just a barrier that's a minute. <laughs> God will go all the way to preserve you. All the way to preserve you. I uh, God's servant, Dr. Paul Lenetje, traveled for a crusade, and then in the country, it was South Africa, there was a history of People kidnapping people from the airport or all manner of roads. So they were traveling with their own car. One of the kidnappers thought it was a normal car. London. When he approached, he touched the car. He was shocked. Hey, it's not every car that is normal. I mean, he, he, he went back. He advised himself. There are people God watch with jealousy. Jealousy. Why? Because of how far they have gone to love God. Now, I, the question is for you. How far will God go for you? I was right in front of Reabonje Crusade when somebody was playing that the Adeboye made those people that sell messages. And then I was listening to the Adeboye uh, preach. He said that God loves everybody but does not relate with everybody equally. He relates with you based on how far. That's why he said, draw near to him and he will draw near to you. God is constant. Come on, now we together. So when you love God and go all the way, you're preserving. He will keep you. Love, you keep the person you love. 
When you love somebody, you go all out for the person. Come on, hallelujah. Number three, when you love the Lord, you will, you will encounter him. You begin to have spontaneous, supernatural encounters. God begins to show himself to you. First Samuel 3, verse 21. John 14, 21. Put John 14, 21. The Bible says, And God appeared to John. I know. Say, if you love me and love my father, both of us will come and make our abode with you. John 14, 21. He that had my commandment and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Once in a while, Jesus will show himself to you. Once in a while, you will, you will have angelic encounters. Don't forget 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9 to 10. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, for neither has he entered the heart of what God has prepared for them that what? Love him. You will begin to see angels. Hallelujah. While people are praying for you, you will see them on the platter of love. As you love God, he will reveal himself to you. Praise the Lord. So how many of us have discovered the love languages of God now? Will you express this to God? Will you win souls? Will you be, show faith? Will you show obedience? Will you worship him and praise him? Concentrate yourself. Serve him. Be spiritual. Be purposeful in your life. And then may God go all out for you in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you and enlarge your heart and cause you to love him. In Romans chapter 5 verse 3 down to 5. Romans chapter 5 verse 5 is the reason why we are taking today's communion. Romans chapter 5 verse 5. And not only so, so we glory in tribulation. Verse 5. And hope make it not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Hallelujah. First of all, before we can share the communion, can you appreciate the love for the word of God that we have received and say, Father, we thank you. Open my eyes and help me to love you more. Open my eyes and help me to love you more. Open my eyes and help me to love you more. In the name of Jesus. I believe you are sensitive and you are praying, asking the Lord to help him to love you more. Ask the love of grace to speak his love language. Ask the Lord to help you speak his love language. Help me, Lord Jesus. Help me. The fact that you are in church today means you love God. God has never condemned anyone. God has never weakened anyone. He is always available to help us. Weaknesses. Lord, help my weaknesses. Help me to love you. The love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. Ask the Lord, shed your love in my heart. 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 Pray to the Lord and say, Lord, shed your love in my heart. Help me. I love you. Weaknesses in my life. Help me. And he's willing to help. Can you rededicate your love to God and say, Lord, awake my love for you. Help me to love you. you are talking to the Lord because it's time to talk to him. Intimate session of you and your maker. Lord, help me. I love you. Forever, Lord Jesus. I love you, Lord Jesus. Help me to love you more. This is the way to speak my love to you. Shamanda Gabrana Malanda Kabala Ante Kete Brana Malanda Kabala Gadi Ayala Baraga Lagada Brana Malanda Gala Bagana Shegete Brana Malanda Gada Brana Malanda Gadi Forever, 
Can you pray about the relationship because I feel the Holy Spirit is resting about our relationship, about consecrating ourselves? Can you pray and say, Lord, help me to keep myself, help my life, help me to keep myself? Bible says, By strength shall no man prevail. Bible says, The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Help me, Lord Jesus. Help me. God is available to help all of us consecrate ourselves. You know, don't forget the Bible says, He that thinketh his stand should take heed lest he falls. None of us is strong. We have to ask God for help. Help, help me, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. There is a book called I kiss death in goodbye. Have you ever read that book before? You have seen that book. Have you seen that book? Do you know the recent story of that guy, Iran? Yeah, he has divorced his wife. No longer a believer again. When you read that book, you think it's from uh, living, uh, uh, what's the name of this church? Deeper Life Church. I kiss death in goodbye. That was the title of that message. Very, very powerful. Wasn't it a powerful book? Very, very powerful. But see, the Bible says, He that thinketh his stand should take heed let it fall i pray that god will help us and i pray over you that you will not miss it in marriage the lord will grant you a fruitful happy home give you a partner you love and cherish give you the dream of your heart the lord will give you the wisdom to cultivate your relationship to marriage you will not lose the people by compromising wisdom to make it bliss in jesus mighty name as you partake of this communion, the Holy Ghost is breathing upon you. Coming upon you to cause the love of God to light and be activated upon you. You will love God more than ever. You will wake up in the night singing songs in tears. You will wake up in the morning with tears of worship. You will be singing and shedding tears of love. Because the one you love has wrapped your heart. As you partake of this communion, mark my word. The Lord will breathe upon you a new dimension of love for Him. A new dimension of love for the house of God. You will not rest until you have all of Him. You will not rest until you see His love manifest. In the name of Jesus, Holy God, breathe upon this communion. And let your love enter each and every one of us. Breathe on us. Activate a heart for you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can you take the love? The one I love is ever before. You know that song? Sees upon my heart. Let's keep it. I live for the one I love. The one I love is ever before. He sees upon my heart. I live for the one I love. Hallelujah. You can take your seat, praise the Lord. And let's give our offering. Father Lord, we thank you for the chance to give. We ask the Lord to receive our offering in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. The compass you need has just been delivered into your hands. You can get all the anointed messages on our Telegram channel at Shekinah Encounter Center Sermons. 
For more inquiries, you can also call 080-65-22-6276 or 080-26-11-2114. Remain rapturable, 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 rapturable.